welcome to another video, fabulous friends. I am Mark, and today, well, just uh, follow me, please. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's do this once more. Breathe in, breathe out. There you go. Don't you feel a little more relaxed? I mean, what's going on here? 10, 15, 30% uh, decreases in prices in TCGs in general, and everybody's panicking. I've been seeing some, uh, following some of my fellow YouTubers uh, speak about this, and uh, I thought that I would do my own video about concerning um, market in general, the market investments, and uh, you'll be getting basically here a, um, how can I say, the perspective from an old geezer. I mean, I think that I'm older than most of you out there, and I can tell you right, right away that uh, since uh, my 20s, or since my early life, I would say that I've been through about two and a half to three complete circles when we're speaking of investment, be it wine collecting, uh, you know, stock market, TCGs, well, more recently TCGs, but everybody, everything seems to follow a trend. Now, you may recall that about um, a f month and a half ago, I produced this video and it was titled, uh, Is This a Bubble? All right. Now, and I said, no, we're speaking about flesh and blood here particularly. I'll get to other uh, TCGs and other collectibles in a minute. But I, I answered you no in terms of, of flesh and blood because a bumble is when, you know, you have everything collapsing to basically zero. So that's why I do not think uh, very far from that, that, that uh, flesh and blood is a bubble. However, I mean, a bumble does not equate a cycle and cycles exist. So I mean... Obviously, things go up, things go down, and, uh, you know, I can tell you from, you know, from my early 20s, being having been through two and a half to three cycles of everything, I can tell you that uh, it's just normal. There's there's no, no motive for panic. No, I mean, just relax. I mean, the only people that are probably panicking with these are what I call flippers. Okay, let's get back to it. Four types of people that get involved here with uh, TCGs. We'll concentrate on that first. Um, you have the player. All right. Player not interested even sometimes even in collecting the product. The pure player of a TCG will often build his deck, and whether it's Magic the Gathering, Flesh and Blood, or any other TCG out there, and um, you know play with the deck in uh, Magic. For example, you want to have a high aggro deck, you know, red deck, a control deck, or whatever, and then you know plays a couple of weeks, couple of months with that deck, and then builds another one, and then uh, you know the flavor of the month, what it is, and and then just resells sometimes the cards to an LGS and buys others and makes another deck, and that's the pure player, all right? That's having fun with the game. Not even interested in actually collecting the cards. Now, the collector, perfect. That's that's a lot me. I mean, I do play. Uh, well, it was hard with the uh, COVID playing uh, Flesh and Blood so far, and I haven't gotten involved with uh, with all that's going on on uh, Discord and all that, but uh, I will when the local game stores uh, restart uh, their, their evenings of play. But, um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm mostly, I would say, describe myself as a collector. First thing I like to do is when I receive, you know, when a new set comes out, I want to own all the cards, you know, so an actual play set, four in Magic, three of each copy in uh, Flesh and Blood. And uh, that's what I'm mostly into. And uh, so that's the pure collector. And the collectors oftentimes are also players, you know, we, we mix both. And then you have what I call, you know, the investor. And why you do this, actually, I'll get back to that. So the investor, that's my third category. And then the fourth category is the, the pure speculator. Let's not put investor and speculator into the same boat here because it's not the same thing. Speculator equals flippers, you know. I, I've used that word, and I know you guys said, some of you said flipper is a fish, you know, it's a big dolphin, I know. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, right now what's going on, makes flippers nervous not anybody else well they shouldn't make you nervous if you're not one of these people that are actually going out there and seeing that they can buy a product for 150 bucks or 200 or even 250 and then the next day i'll sell it for the double the price or triple the price on ebay or wherever else all right those are flippers and those are, i can understand that those people are probably the ones that are um with reason the with reason the uh, the nervous ones because you know if you've uh bought for a price and it's down below that you know you're kind of not liking your situation and i i compare i'll compare flippers because i'm very familiar with the stock market with uh day traders you know just that's just about the same thing day traders by the way on the stock market will uh buy stock in the morning and uh i don't know if you're familiar with that but 
oftentimes by the end of the day when the stock market closes they have to have liquidated all the bought during the day so it's just a buy and sell buy and sell buy and sell every day so that's why it's called you know day trader and um i can equate that a little bit to what's going on with uh, those flippers and um if you're not one of those because i kind of despise people that are just actually doing that just to make a quick buck i mean I mean, it's okay, I guess, if, if that's the only way you can uh, earn your living, that's one thing. But um, but let me just say that all the rest, to me, is perfectly legit. But let's, let's get back to um, investing, okay? Now, I told you that I was the old geyser, geezer. Uh, I'll get back to how things were when we started out in investing and how things... It used to be that, you know, you just make sure that you're not living pay paycheck to paycheck by uh, having a rainy day fund for like three months, six months. And once that was done, you would actually um, fill out your RRSP here if you're here in Canada or your 401k if you're in the US. And I don't know how it's uh, called uh, if you guys have programs like that all around the world in other countries. And uh, then once that was done, well, then you would get uh, and, and while you're doing that, you're investing in stocks, you know, in different kind of stocks, actual, uh, you know, stocks and bonds and different types of categories of uh, investments in the stock market in itself. And uh, that's fine. And then once that was done, well, perhaps you would uh, have some extra money to get involved in collecting in collectibles. And um, for example, wine, we do have a wine collection and people get involved sometimes in, in paintings and in artwork in, in TCGs, you know, so it was kind of a gradual thing. You you kind of protect your butt, your arrieres uh, by going gradually and uh, making sure that you were set with respect to what you need to have, you know, security in life. And then, you know, as you go, you're more and more um, loose, I should say, with the extra money you have. And um and, and, and crypto is one of the examples. I mean, once you're into that, but it's different in terms of, of age group. I mean, if you are in your 20s, I can understand that some people are right away getting into uh, those types of speculative investments because um, if anything goes wrong, that's what you have the advantage of being able to do. You have the leisure of having the rest of your life to, to catch up or to, you know, if you make a mistake when you're 25, you know, you'll turn around and you'll do something when you're something else when you're for your 30s or your you know, 35s and 40s, uh, you have plenty of time. So, um, but even then, it was not so much the way things were back 30, 35 years ago. We always seem to want, well, as a conservative conservative person myself, I'm liberal, by the way, in a certain sense, but <laughs> conservative in other sense. I always wanted, when we opened businesses, I wanted to make sure that, you know, bank loans were paid off before we opened a second business and a third and a fourth. We ended up having quite a few clinics, as you might as you know, uh, we've mentioned, talked about this uh, before, um, but those were in the early days before we were retired, but that's only been three years now. So uh, anyway, having fun with that and uh, spending time on TCGs because of that. So demographics today are a little different. Uh, you know, people have different ways and, to, and don't forget that the last 10 years, so if you're like a 20 something or a 30 something, the last 10 years I would say have been pretty good to a lot of people because the me the money has been fairly easy and like, I can tell you that it's not always like that. Things are cyclical, as I was mentioning at the beginning, and I found out that cycles in general, you know, whatever you're talking about, tend to last about 13 to 15, 13, 14 years, and uh, from a trough to trough, you know, like going up and then going back down and then going back up. So, you know, getting back to the same part of the cycle, 13, 14 years, that's why I'm saying that uh, I think I've gone and seen things go up and down at least, you know, two and a half, three times each for for everything that, that exists. I mean, whether we're talking real estate, stock market, and collectibles, investables, and so on and so forth. And uh, I didn't uh, even mention uh, gold and silver, uh, bars, precious metals, or platinum. Those are all investables that uh, that we've gotten involved in. And as things went, you know, as we were able to to afford going into deeper and deeper into, into investment. And and it's all a question of, you know, not having your eggs in the same basket. So why am I talking to you all about this? I mean, it's because I want to tell you that you need to, people need to relax. I mean, there is, if you are truly in this, in collectibles as an investment and not as a speculative uh, move, like I was comparing it to flippers, I mean, the word investment should mean long term in terms of my perspectives, right? You, um, if you, let, let's just get back to, flesh and blood in my example i mean i've put maybe uh i don't know i haven't counted but um 40 ish 40 grands into uh into the game so far 
And when I look at my um, collection tracker and it says 247,000, I mean, we're like talking five, six, seven times the uh, investment of six months ago. Now, I'm not selling anything because it is an investment. It's like, I also say to myself that, you know, you, you want to have things that you own are just to make sure that you secure your future. Uh, it's, it's a way of diversifying. And if you're a true investor, there is no reason to panic, no reason to be worried. I mean, you guys, oh, that's what I had started to say. You guys that have been around just for the last 10 years in terms of investments have seen real estate jump since the 2008, 2009 uh, cabal. I mean, uh, uh, downpour that happened about that at that time and you've seen real estate now for the last 10 last 10 12 years go up and up and up you've seen crypto go from nothing to a hundred dollars to you know 30 45 50 thousand you've seen um tcgs uh, in the past uh, few years especially uh practically double in price so what i'm saying i don't want to blame anybody here but what i'm saying is that you youngsters out there the people that have only been around for those last 10 15 last years in terms of investment right um, have seen that money uh, seem to grow easily. I mean, investment, easy, you know, easy investing. Things are not, have not always been like that. And that is just not normal. I mean, in stock market, in a lifetime, just to give you an example, when you buy a stock, $10, and it goes up to $100, and it's like becomes tenfold what it was worth initially. I mean, we call that in stock investing a 10-bagger, okay? Um, old old terms, okay? I'm, I'm not familiar if they're still using them uh Nowadays, but we used to say, "Oh, it's a ten bagger. You've you know made ten times your money, or hundred baggers." I mean, I mean those those are those are crazy. Those are extremely rare, unless you got involved in Google in the beginning, or Microsoft or Apple in the beginning. You know, those are even uh, much more rare. But and here we are talking about a game that just came out, and it's like worth already six, seven times uh, what you paid for. I mean, if you got Crucible of War for a box of uh, at a hundred and fifty dollars. And uh, now it's worth, uh, what is it, around $1,500? I mean, that is the 10-bagger. It's been six months. So 30% decrease, 20% decrease, uh, you know, whatever it is. All I know is that it's it's been fabulous so far. Fabulous. I got to plug the channel. And, uh, and there's, like I said, if you're a true investor, what is the worry? Things are cyclical. They will go up. They will go, go down. And... Um, and you know actually just to let you just to show you an example here i'll use a personal example when i started off and in, in investing i used to say to myself um you know the conservative part of me and the part like gradually growing um i used to say to myself that for every twenty thousand uh, dollar slice that i put aside or that that i that is there in terms of an investment if i am able to grow or get and that is even that is very optimistic ten percent per year I mean, if you have a slice of $20,000 invested in something, you know, no matter what, and you're able to, from that 20000 generate a 10% uh, rate of return, that is like $2,000 a year, okay? So this is how I used to think. Mark, for every $20,000 slice of money or investable that you're able to put aside, $2,000 is going to come to you every year. Now, there are 52 weeks in a year. If you're able to do that, just think that once you have your first $20,000, you've covered the first year of the month. You've covered January 1st to January 7th. Now let's work on our second $20,000. We're going to cover January 8th to January 14th. You know, And if I can cover the whole year like that, what that basically tells me is that no matter what happens, I'll be able to generate 52 times that 2,000, that 10%, 2,000, and that's 104 grand a year. So that's not bad. I mean, I won't, uh, I won't go uh, going hungry if I do that. So I used to think like that, you know, every go bit by bit, parcel by parcel, build things up and never, you know, and then you'll never be looking back. So as I mentioned a little bit in the first part of the video, uh, as we were going and things were, uh, investments were, you know, our, our RSPs or for you guys, 401ks were, were filled up and were, you know, with investments, stocks mainly, bonds and so on and so forth. And then we got into looser categories. We went into wine and uh, we were very lucky. You know, wine appreciated a lot over the past uh, 15, 20 years. And, um, you know, we haven't gotten into paintings, never got into crypto, actually. We are not into crypto, but we are into uh, precious metals and uh, obviously TCGs, uh, you know, uh, I don't even count coin and, and uh, stamp collecting as a, you know, it is an investable, but uh, the trading of that is, it's, the liquidity is not very good. So I don't, I don't count that. And, you know, and with all of that, I say to myself, 
I'm keeping it. It's it's a security policy. I mean, if everything goes, I mean, as we say, if, if ever the shit hits the fan, you know, um, I've got product, I've got investable investments that I've made, you know, I, I can at that point, I would say, okay, uh, I'd sell it so that I can survive. But I mean, it's just a, a, a guarantee. Probably everything we have is probably going to go to, we don't have kids either. We do have nine nephews. So, you know, if we ever end up not selling anything, that's probably what's going to happen. I'll never sell anything because I won't need it, you know. So a, a true investor, I think that's the philosophy you should be having. If you are, I can understand that uh, people that are, you know, just trying to make the quick buck and uh, flip the product. Yeah, but that's not an investment. That's like, that's pure speculation. And that's what I don't um uh, abide or agree with and that's what i do not get involved with so uh so back to those four categories of people you know the the actual uh, players the collectors and the uh the investors and now don't forget that what we mean by investing don't equate that with speculating not the same thing so I've, I'm, I'm separating those two things and that's where it um you know where you can where, where things are acceptable so I have no problem with somebody. I mean, I collect the product. I'll have uh, all the cards and then I'm going to keep some product uh, uh, sealed in magic. I do, you know, two to four boxes, uh, booster boxes of each. And uh, with it's different, though, since I started the Flesh and Blood because I started also the channel. And I want to be able in one month, in six months, in one year, as you can see back here, I still want to be able to open Unlimited. At one point, even Unlimited is not going to be uh, Unlimited anymore. Uh, they will stop uh, printing at one point, uh, whether it be two years, three years, I don't know. But uh, with the continuity of this channel that I, I hope uh, will happen, uh, that's why now I'm... I'm getting more sealed and keeping more sealed but it's for my channel it's not for for my personal uh investment well part of it is and that is okay but um just just as a security blanket you know it's just something else that you invest in just like you've done uh i don't know what you guys get involved with let me know in your in the comment section what what, what you like investing in and what you do so uh, i mean i could go on and on with this because i'm i'm that type of person that has been uh always uh, looking for you know new ways of dispersing and putting your eggs in a different basket um not having because there comes a point you know uh, as people grow their money are you really going to have all your money in the stock market i mean stock markets do crash and uh it uh, if you're close to retirement when that happens if you've got a long time ahead of you that's not a problem you know if you can like if there's a 50 percent, 60 percent, what we call a bear market or a, a papa bear and uh and you're only uh 35 years old i mean and you're still 20 years away from retirement that's not a problem you will come back and recuperate from that but for people that are 62 and are counting on their uh retirement savings and uh, there's a crash at that time i mean that's pretty you know pretty devastating and that is why as you go older uh you time tend to diminish what you have as a percentage in stocks and increase what you have in bonds mind you sometimes they both go down at the same time but uh normally uh, you know those are more uh, more of a safe haven um, than than stocks. So, but but even then, I mean, will you put all your money in in stocks? No, you're going to go into different areas. I mean, you have the extra cash flow going to cryptocurrency. Currency. If it's play money, I mean, what's the difference playing? You know, you, we gamble, we go to casinos. I play poker. Uh, uh, mind you, those are tournaments, and I know how much I will be spending uh, and beforehand. But, um, but you know, that's all part of uh, diversifying and that's fine and that's what you need to do, I think. Uh, very important. But don't, uh, don't think that uh, your product uh, every day, that's the same principle as somebody who's watching his stocks every day. Um, actually, I shouldn't speak because I kind of do that. <laughs> but I mean, uh, so some people do it as, uh, as a means of making the decision, should I sell or should I buy? No. Theor theoretically you can look at it every day if you want just for the fun of it or let's say every week but uh but you should in the stock market never you know revaluate or rebalance if you're a long-term investor no more than uh something you know some people say once a year but i don't believe that i think you should do it more like every three months i do it quarterly make sure that we rebalance if we do 15 percent canadian stocks 15 percent u.s stocks and 15 percent uh, international stocks 15 percent bonds or, or a little bit more so that's 70 percent and then a percentage in cash a percentage in in precious metals and a percentage in other collectibles and so on and so forth so you know all that up all that adds up to uh 100 obviously but uh, you can never be just in one thing and uh you know it's not collectibles especially not tcgs are not for me uh, a way of living they're just a way of uh or, or or how can i say 
it's just a, a way of having, you know, protecting yourself for future. If anything happens, you know it's there. It's That's what you call an investment. And, and that's why I have no problem with people that are investors and buy product and keep some sealed. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You know, but uh, if it's just like to uh, screw over the LGS because, you know, they're, they should be making the money because you're flipping, you know, the other person is flipping it and selling the, LG, of the LGS. Mind you, I did do, uh, and I mean, they're the ones that are paying the, uh, like I said, the rent, the electricity and so on and so forth. So they should make the money, but 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 you did see my video there where I say uh, where I was hammering LGSs for unethical practices. I mean, it's no better if they sit on the product and then uh, you know keep it away from the people that are players and want the product, especially when there's a long time between the uh, the launch of the of the first edition and the. Uh, the unlimited, as uh, this is the case right now with uh, with Monarch. Hopefully, they'll they'll be more uh, tight, uh, tightly spanned, like maybe one week or just two weeks difference next time. We'll see with Kingdom what happens. So, uh, all right. So you're getting a little bit of my perspective here with uh, with investment in general. And uh, I'm gonna go have a glass of water. My I'm speaking too much here. My throat is so dry. Let me get a glass of water, and I'm right back. All right. My glass of water turned it out turned out to be a Pepsi, but uh, I love that. Not that I want to. Do so many uh, advertisement. Anyway, uh, yeah, mom, much better now. All right, so I realized that, uh, oh my God, I've been blabbing on for 21 minutes. I didn't realize I've been uh, <laughs> doing all these things. Anyway, um, ad lib, that's what ad lib is. I mean, I'm going all over the place probably with this video, but I still hope that you're liking it. Um, anyway, let me know. So let's let's go through a summary here. Ask yourself, uh, what, why are you buying, you know, no matter what it is, when you're buying something as an investment, why are you buying that investment in particular? Are you buying it because you think you're going to make a quick buck, quick, you know, quickly? Or uh, are you going to turn around and, and resell it right away? If you're investing, you know, think a little more long term than that. As you've seen in this video, I've given you plenty of examples. And uh, what's going on around you is just noise. So relax, dude, <laughs> as it says in my in my thumbnail. Um, and uh, don't be going anywhere. Don't worry about the ups and downs, uh, 30%. That's just normal. There are cycles. Doesn't mean it's a bubble. It's a, a normal cycle. No panic to be, be had. And for those of you, I've had uh, people writing me back. Uh, I got some emails last night. And uh, I can remember uh, Lucien actually telling me, Mark, I've seen Rudy. And he's very bearish on the products on TCGs. I, I love Rudy, but I can just tell you, who cares? I mean... Right, he's right. It's maybe a bearish period as opposed to the long, uh, the long um, bullish period that we've had over the years now. But uh, who cares? I mean, if you're a true investor, if you're in it for the long run, fluctuations are just noise. I mean, they're they're they're, they're nothing. It's just don't worry about them. So you know, just look at the positive side aspect of it. And uh, if you've bought bought into flesh and blood for example six months ago just look at how much everything has appreciated it is not like i know i know you youngsters that are out there those that are in the 20 somethings or 30 somethings have been um, used to the easy money in the past 10 years i mean things do not always go up i mean this is just exceptional and it's all right you know sometimes you correct for a better upswing afterwards so uh and you know don't forget also that um you know, no matter which asset you get involved with, no matter which um, product investment you do, don't forget that your best asset is yourself. So you are the one making decisions, getting ready to. And again, I can go back into, you know, your, the best way to make money. I, I know it's tempting to do all these things. The best way to make money, you know, my grandfather would say, obviously, and uh, that's even way older than me, as you know, <laughs> obviously, um, you know, the best way of making money in life is to work. Okay, yeah, at one point, you're guaranteed of that money. You know, there's no speculation at all. Um, but then it got to our generations and best money, the yeah, best way to make money is to have people work for you, right? So, I mean, everything that they're doing or making, you're getting a cut. You're making, and, you know, we went in business and uh, made, a, you know, good money because we had a lot of employees and that's a, that's the next best thing. And obviously, um, investments, being able to sit back and relax and uh, have your investments, uh, you know, pay for your uh, cost of living, that is even the greatest thing. But uh, no matter what you do and no matter, no matter what stage of your life you're in and whatever choice you make with respect to those, you know, possibilities, don't forget, you're your best, your own best asset. So, you know, think about it, sit back and uh, ask yourself uh, why you're doing this and to what uh, avail to, you know, why uh, are you uh, so involved and what you like about it. And uh, don't forget to like our video. 
speaking about liking. So um, that's about it. I guess I could ramble on, but this will be too long by now. I guess this is another four or five more minutes. Anyway, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. What am I doing here? Thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, don't forget to get your friends and people around you to subscribe to our channel. Uh, I think we're having fun here, don't, aren't we? And um, more contests coming. Unlimited is coming very soon. I'm going to talk to you about a brand new game produced right here in Canada in our next video on Monday. So don't miss that. I'm going to have a lot of information with respect to it. Pretty good game. New TCG. Came out during COVID a little bit. Also just like Flesh and Blood. So they haven't had a chance to... Uh, to spread their wings quite totally yet, but uh, we'll see, and uh, we'll have that for you soon. So until then, have fun, take care, and be safe out there. Thanks for watching.